Hey, how's it going at the gym? And today we're gonna do, got it kind of backwards for you, but we're gonna do my detail, uh, look at the test results for the move touring here. We are out here in front of my yurt and we, uh, sorry, I gotta get my piece of paper in my pocket here, go through the test. So I did the standard kind of set of testing I would usually do on the on the e-move touring and it's it's been a fun scooter. I've really enjoyed riding it. And uh, so I'm gonna do a little bit of comparison to other scooters and just scooters really. And there'll be some stuff on the screen, some helpful graphs as we go along and let's jump into it. So the first thing is I like to do range testing and I like to do it in a way where I can show you the results and, and track it. I did four and kind of almost a fifth range test. And the first range test I did, I did this in mode two. So I was limited on speed. Uh, that only caps you out about uh, maybe 16 miles an hour, depends on how you're riding um, and where the battery's sitting on charge. Uh, but I got, and I stretched it over a couple days because I, I wanted I wanted to exhaust the battery pretty much all the way. And I got uh, just under 24 miles. And there wasn't, yeah, there was a, really light winds. It was pretty warm. This was uh, back a, a month, over a month ago. So it was in the 80 to 90 degree range. And uh, it took 580 watt hours to recharge, which uh, the, this battery is 624. So it was getting pretty close to being you know, about 20% remaining. And that, that ended up with an efficiency of you know, 20, a little over 24 watt hours per mile. Oh, and another note, the motor temperature, for whatever reason, at the end of rides, tends to get a little high on this scooter. Um, that was 138 degrees at the end of that test. So moving on to uh, test number two, this was another one where I did a, I did a day where I did, uh, I did this all in mode, the rest of the tests were in mode three. So basically I'm riding at close to the maximum speed of 22 to 24 miles per hour depends on where you are at charge again. So I got 15.61 miles, and these are the GPS distances. I, the odometer uh, registered 19.1 miles. So there's some optimism in the display for speed and for distance. So just be aware of that if you're really trying to check speed and distance. You probably want to use something besides the display a lot of, I've heard you can get a little bit closer if you're able to f you fine tune the, the tire size. Um, I really haven't played with that to really try to get that display uh, distances tracking and the speed tracking super closely. Uh, during this test, 115 degrees motor temperature, so a little less, but it was a little cooler outside, 70, 75 degrees. Could have had something to do with it. I also rode this, like I said, in multiple trips. In my last trip, I was only going three a little over three miles so um, that probably contributed to the motor temperature honestly more so um, it took 470 watt hours to recharge this time uh, then on to my third test just another this was just a commute into work and this is honestly one of the, a little bit of a side here this is one of the first commuters i've written uh one of the first scooters i've written that I was really comfortable doing that whole, it's about 13 and a half miles into work on this on the scooter. I, I did take the charger with me so I could recharge at work, but uh, the suspension is just good enough that you can, and the deck size really opens up more foot positions. It really makes it more comfortable for longer rides. I think those are two real key things for long rides and cruise control. It's really nice not to be holding the trigger or the thumb or what, however the throttle is. 13.36 miles and uh, about 65 to 74 degrees uh, there's a little bit of wind this time actually um, and i used 470 watt hours and then the uh, return trip that day it's a slightly different route uh, so this is this will be speed test number four uh, 12.9 miles and same temperature range that day 420 watt hours of recharge and so at that end of that second part of the test, that's when I, I saw that 140.8 degree motor temperature, so a little bit high. Um, 
And what I did at the end, I wanted to see, uh, I'm, I'm right about 200 miles on the scooter, a little over 200, and I want to see how it was holding up with range. So I just did a 10 mile ride, I, and I wanted to see what, what it was using. Um, and I was trying to keep the speed down. And what I found is I actually got poorer efficiency trying to meter the speed than I did letting it get to the maximum speed in mode two and holding cruise control. So this was kind of a speed. This was intending to be, I'm trying to almost do like a max range test. And it kind of backfired on me a little bit. I, I think that trying to meter the speed, because um, it's really hard to set cruise control on most of these trigger type scooters below the max speed um, in, in a given you know, speed mode. It just, it's just difficult to get that to really set in there because you have to hold it for so long. So all this data wrapped around, I'm really coming up with efficiency numbers because I think that's more helpful. Um, and I've kind of stopped running the battery out totally. Uh, like my first test, I ran it until the scooter shut itself down, but the eMove scooters have a voltage shut down point in there. And this one shuts down at 41 and a half volts, which is right about 20% battery. So if you know that, you can, uh, if you run out of battery and you know you only have another mile to go, you can actually go into the setup menu and assume it will power on. That's a good point. I'll check that if that worked. But if it will power on, you would uh, just reduce that shutdown point by like maybe a half a percent or I mean half a volt and just try to get yourself that last, lets you tap into the last 20% of battery. But I kind of do like that kind of forced shutdown, but you just need to know that that's about one battery bar remaining. Uh, you don't get to the flashing at that 20% shutdown. You don't get that flashing point or any of that. To wrap that all up, this is kind of what I find interesting. So in speed mode two, that maximum of 16-ish to 16, 18 miles per hour for me, 24.22 uh, watt hours per mile. And then when you jump up to speed mode three, which is maxing out at the top speed of the, the scooter, that drops to, I was using 32.62 watt hours per mile. So it just, it goes to show you as you increase speed, you decrease efficiency. And you know, a lot of e-bikes and even some smaller motor scooters are getting are under 20 watt hours per mile efficiency. So some of these scooters, as you start pushing them higher in the speed and uh, you know, you just lose some efficiency. So if you're wanting to max out a range for a given day, you just have to pay that penalty that you can't go as fast. All right, sorry, that was kind of long-winded. Let's move on into acceleration tests. So I got an acceleration to, as you'll see on the screen here, to 100 feet. And I like to do a timed, it's a little more controllable to me. Because uh, if you try to track speed, uh, it's really it's changing really quickly and I don't have anything precise enough to get a real good speed so time I can get real real good so I got 6.49 seconds to 100 feet now this there's only one scooter that was faster to 100 feet and that was the 08 which 6.45 seconds so pretty close interestingly at the same day I tested this I tested the King Song KS 14d unicycle and that's the fastest non-bike I've got to 100 feet, which was 6.32 seconds. thought that was kind of interesting. Continuing on from acceleration, I went and did the same hill climb I've been doing, this banister hill. Uh, you might watch see one of those videos, it's kind of corny. But um, it's a 300 foot long hill, 30 foot elevation gain, it's about a 12% slope. So just so you know that this this scooter the manufacturer claims it can climb a 15 percent slope which i don't doubt that a lot of scooters say 30 percent and there's actually only like a couple hills in san francisco that are that steep um that's very steep um and i think there's some there's some uh lack of understanding about how slope is slope is calculated a 30 percent slope is very steep so anyway this scooter, this scooter does a good job hill climbing. So on the hill climb test, I made it to the top of the hill in 17 point, around 17.3 seconds. A full three seconds faster than the next fastest scooter, which was the 08. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll put that, a little bit of that climb um, footage in the video here, um, but you can hear it. Like it just, it just cruises up.
is absolutely no problem there. And I think a lot of the acceleration on these scooters, uh, why the Zero Eight and this scooter do so well, is because when you have a solid tire in the back, which I don't know if that helps that much, but it's an eight inch tire. So you have, you're getting a lot more usable torque through a smaller tire. That's pretty much what I think. Anyway, all right, so you went up the hill, so now you need to come down it. So let's look at some braking. This scooter stops really well, especially for a single drum brake scooter. The electronic brake seems really strong. And I was able to get this stopped in 20.4 feet from 15 miles per hour. My son was about 18.4. Um, and this performed better than some of the other drum brake scooters you'll see on the screen. Uh, I think a lot because of the pretty good suspension travel in the rear and you're able to really kind of use your body weight and push into that rear brake. It's hard to explain, but if you, if you ride it, <laughs> you can feel that. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a lighting. I, I, did, I filmed uh, the lights on and it was on the dash of my car. So I'm gonna play this video right now. All right, so this is the e-move touring from the night from the scooter. You get the backlight, which you can adjust. You get an idea of the pattern. You're not getting, because you're getting some interference with these springs, you're not getting that great of a broadcast pattern. Uh, but you do get pretty good rear lighting. And uh, I have Christmas lights on here right now, so it's a little, I'm gonna turn those on just so you can see. Uh, this is kind of a nice way to really increase your visibility. So yeah, I just wanted to show that lighting, a little bit of lighting video. Um, there were some folks that had asked some questions about a few of the things on the scooter and I just wanted to talk about some of those real quick. So one is the, the presets. One thing I think is pretty interesting is so you have these two presets and hopefully you can see they're really just a simple drilled hole. Um, and so you could add or add, add or, you could add another one lower if you really wanted to, and you could even add one in the middle, I think. I'm not sure you could get one more up in here, into this clamp area, like right up in here. Um, but it could be an idea for adding to other scooters or, you know, I, I, I kind of like this even. And then one thing you, I'm gonna show from the other camera, the, mechan the mechanism to re release the, the button to release the stem can be a little sticky. You see, it's like, it's not really easy to use and it's it's hard to resist the desire to use something else but you can get this little button stuck inside of the stem and it's a little bit difficult to get out um, on the back side of the, of the stem on the clamp here this little kind of lock nut locks this clamp into place but if you back this off a little bit you can kind of play with how difficult this is to push in um, and if you're not doing it i mean i don't really mean mind you because it makes it pretty secure is just you kind of have to do a little push it in and, and wiggle it a little bit on the rear suspension has nuts on either end of the springs and so you can you can change those a little bit um, just to reduce and then i recommend using some bearing grease or chain lube in here not bearing grease i do chain lube because um, occasionally these you can see they're pretty dirty and they start to squeak a little bit so the one thing I really recommend is going around on any of these scooters and, you know, maybe every hundred miles, just going around and just, you know, with a couple wrenches and a couple Allen keys, you can check all these bolts pretty quick. And I think it's worth doing that um, just because they, with all the vibration that these scooters experience, Rip it, up. Uh, it does tend to loosen time. some things up. This scooter basically matches the range claims um, in speed mode too, which is I think is a good sign a lot of times the, the range claims are really in the light you know the slowest mode or at a really slow speed so I was impressed that this was matching the the speed claims and I really like I'll just be honest right now this is the not that I've been honest going all right I'm gonna be more honest anyway um, I have a few scooters in the garage so I got a 08 I got a zoom strider I still have that I got this guy, I got the Kingsong Unicycle and the E-Move Cruiser. And if I'm grabbing a scooter or something to ride, I grab either this or the Unicycle. Um, so I have 
almost as many miles on this now as a 08. Um, and I, I like it because with all the suspension, like I can just jump off curbs, not if I need to. And, uh, you know, I've gotten to, I can actually bunny hop this up pretty decent things if I need to. So for my particular riding style, I like it, even though I actually like a lower deck height than this has. Um, but for, you know, for me, if this was a, if you, you had a low deck clearance with the same setup with this, if you could even make it work, um, I would really like it because then I could do my, I like to ride while kicking. I have a kind of weird style. I like, I like to be a little more engaged with it, almost like skateboarding on a scooter. The website is in the works. I'm just trying to get the final details on it, some logo stuff, and it's elect it's gonna be electron-surfer.com. And I was really impressed with this scooter and the contact with Vora Motors. Like they were they were thorough, they were responsive to questions, and they were also looking uh, for people to be dealers for them. So I decided to do to go for that so i'm actually uh, now a, a dealer for vora motors and the e-move scooters and i'm also i've been doing some repairs for people with warranty issues so if you have a warranty issue if you're on the west coast you might end up talking to me uh, this would allow me to do and i actually end up quitting my regular job to dedicate all my time to this so you know hope to bring you more videos and you know if you're looking at scooters you know, my contact information will be on the website you can give me a call ask me questions i'll help if i can that's really what i'm trying to do is help i'm not trying i'm not a salesperson i'm not trying to sell you this scooter i like it um i think it does a good job but every scooter it's a it's a continuum it's like what you want what you're just the way you ride um i'm just trying to show you how this thing performs versus what manufacturer says and it does a good job so hope this helps you out if you have some comments Feel free to leave them below. I hear my chickens over there pecking. Um, but anyway, sorry it's not sunny today, but I still got a yurt back here. That's pretty cool. I'll talk to you next time. I just said my own yurt was cool. That's kind of like self-promoting. Oh, whatever. All right.